Tier Lists A resource that many newcomers in the Fighting King community find helpful, but a resource that is largely inconsistent and unreliable. Because anyone and their mother can make a tier list these days, everybody makes up their own rules with tier lists and what tiers mean have been completely ruined. Like a lot of things in the fighting game community, definitions just get destroyed like trip guard and fuzzy guard and matchup numbers and no, I'm sorry, there's no such thing as a 4.5, 5.5 matchup. Look, 6-4 means it's pretty even and very winnable on both sides. 6-4 is not a bad... A lot of tier lists these days mean very different things amongst the horde of tier lists being put out by people. But there have been a couple of tweets recently that have been trying to do their best to right these wrongs. The first of these tweets comes from Lord Knight, who quote tweeted this, the D in A slash B slash C slash slash C D and the S in SSS slash SS slash S plus slash S are the same. It's all relative. To which Lord Knight responded, dude, no, I don't know why people say this, D equals bad. If S is the lowest tier in the game, it is saying the character power in this game is very high. I seriously do not understand why people don't get this. And I 100% agree with Lord Knight. It's not relative. Just like that creepy uncle at Thanksgiving who's actually just a family friend. No, mom. I'm not going to give him a hug. He's not relative. People have to understand that the letters in a tier list actually mean something. Tier lists should be balanced around the idea that A tier are the characters who have the best chance to win any given random matchup. And from there, characters are balanced around that. You can have a game with everyone in A tier, but you can't have a game with everyone in D tier. Even with four snails racing, one of them is going to win regardless of how slow they all are. So let's define the tiers. A tier means you are extremely strong generally have all the tools needed to win the game's meta. You rarely have any bad matchups, if any at all, and you can confidently win a major using only that character. B tier means that you're also strong, but have a few matchups that are problematic and might be missing one or two tools that would cover up certain flaws of your character. You might need a secondary just for a few specific matches, or, you know, your bad matchups are from characters that are very rarely played. C tier means you have to be a character specialist to succeed with them. Most people who succeed with these characters have dedicated like their lives to using this character, despite their flaws and significant number of bad matchups. Uh, for example, in this list here, we've got people like Kusamundo who play Honda, Aniken who play Ken, and we have uh, Komoda who play Blanca but you're not gonna see a lot of general population doing well with these characters in tournaments. And then there's D tier. D tier means you mostly have bad matchups, that your chances of winning with this character alone is very low. They lack many tools needed to be competitive, and you will rely a lot on obscurity and lack of knowledge, uh, lack of matchup knowledge for your wins. As Lord Knight says, these characters are bad. And of course, there are the characters who are just special. The S tier. They have all the tools needed to win, like the A tier, and then some. They generally have an extremely overpowered tactic that can be abused, like Vega here, who has the abusable off-the-wall mix-up that he can win with by itself, even though without it, he's still A tier. And Dalsum, who I'm sorry Dalsum players, that drill, he has the best dive kick in Street Fighter history. That thing is so broken and his throw range is like 10 miles away and he has like 17 amazing and what Dalsum was 12 amazing anti-airs not good enough for you? You needed 17? Anyways. There is one more tier that deserves mentioning, and that's characters who literally break the game with how strong they are. They are so powerful that they can't even be included in the game, otherwise they would be the only character played. These are the banned characters. It's very rare, but Akuma in ST is a great example. So again, tiers are not relative, and there's an easy way to show why. Let's say we have a tier list where four characters are in the SSS, SS, S+, and S tier. 
According to some, that means this is also the same as placing them in A, B, C, and D tier. But all you have to do to mess this up is to just legitimately add a D tier character to this game. So now what? You listed them as A, B, C, and D before, now you have to bunch them all up into S tier where they actually should have been in the first place. So adding characters, you know, using the relative idea completely messes up your tier list and will be inconsistent throughout the game's life cycle. Now, some may argue that you can do the same thing to my list as well, just add a character worse than D No! If a character is worse than D tier, you just add an F tier to your chart. And you don't need to worry about anything else because you can't make a character worse than that. F tier is for useless characters that can't win. And worse than useless is still useless. In golf, there's a triple bogey for three over par. Do you know what they call 10 over par? A reason to quit golf. It doesn't need a name because by the time you're five over par or more, it's pointless to discern. F tier is for every character that's basically useless. So no, the argument does not apply to this tier list. So once again, tier lists need to be consistent and we need to be better about making them. But there's one thing that needs to be addressed and Vissant recently touched upon that in a tweet of his own. He says, <clears throat> Old man rant about tier list incoming. For a community that depends on tier lists for content, we're really bad at making them. Seeing tier lists with huge S slash S minus rows just ticks me off. If there are 10 plus characters in your S tier, there are actually zero characters in your S tier. He's right. Remember, S tier should be reserved for characters with particularly abusive tactics that allow them to win, like Vega in Super Turbo, Yun and Chun in Third Strike, Nakaruru in CVS1, Kokonoe when she was first dropped into Blaze Blue. We've gotten to a point where we've forgotten what S tier actually means, and this is largely due to games being pretty well balanced nowadays. We rarely actually have S tier characters. And we've just become so accustomed to calling the best characters S tier when they're not actually S tier. So, for example, th this this list right here, right? This this is a, a this is just a random tier list that I've pulled on from from the internet, but it's very indicative of what a lot of Street Fighter V tier lists look like, with about five or six characters or more in the S tier. And that just doesn't make any sense. It can actually be argued that Street Fighter V actually has zero S tier characters. If you look at this past year's CPT results, the character variety amongst qualifying players is massive. And it's not dominated by any character. In fact, I think Balrog, the boxer, has the most representation and I don't think many people would actually call him S tier or broken. Street Fighter V realistically only has A, B, and C tier characters. Now, if you want to break them up into more granular categories like A+, like this tier list is doing over here, and you want to add A+, or A-, minus or B+, plus or whatever, that's up to you. If you want that kind of granularity, that's fine. As long as it remains within the confines of what we've established for the definition of tiers. So, why even bring this up? Why is this something worth trying to fix? Like Vissant said, for a community that so relies heavily on tier lists, we're really bad at making them. And because tier lists are something that newcomers in our scene typically look for early on, it's important that we make sure tier lists are consistent so as not to confuse the future generation of fighting game players. And, you know, if we confuse them, it'll just lead them to extra frustrations. They think, oh, look, this character's S tier in this game. And then they go and play Street Fighter V and they see Poison is S tier, and she's not even remotely S tier. These are just extra frustrations to add to newcomers in an already difficult genre to enter. You know, this is a hard genre of gaming to enter. And we don't want to confuse the new generation of players. We want them to come in and start enjoying the game. I mean, look at them. Look at them. They're adorable. Why would you want to lie to them with your tier list? They're, that's just cruel. If we can't help these kids with honest tier lists, we might as well be teaching them to just match. We don't want 
the future generation of fighting game players to look like this, do we? No, no, this is not what we want. I don't know, maybe it is. <laughs> maybe it is. I, I might be okay with that. But in any case, thank you for listening and hanging out here and listening to this edition of the Chen Reaction. Please like and subscribe below on YouTube. And make sure also to follow the Chenzor Dynasty on twitch.tv slash jchenzor for live content by yours truly. But uh, outside of that, thank you for watching. Take care. Be excellent to each other and party on, dudes. Peace out.